So not too long ago, I received a message in my Instagram DMs from a guy named Chris. And in the message, Chris basically said, my video that I did 10 years ago talking about how I carried a gun with the round in the chamber and why I decided to do it saved his life because before watching that video, he never really carried with a round in the chamber. So after watching the video, Chris said he started carrying with a round in the chamber. And at some point further down the line, unfortunately, somebody tried to rob Chris. And during that robbery, Chris was able to defend himself with his firearm and live to see another day. And Chris decided that he owed me something, which he really didn't, but he felt that he wanted to gift me with a gold pendant version of the round that he used to actually save his life. Not the actual round, but a variation of it. And I thought it would be a good idea to have Chris come onto my platform and tell his story. Now, up to up to now, according to Chris, he hasn't told anyone this story. This isn't something that he's kind of gone around and done videos on so forth and so on. But he w wanted to come on my platform. I asked him to come on my platform so that he can tell his story so that you all can learn from his experience. And so I think it's a very important for us to learn from other people's experience so we know what changes we may want to make as far as how we train and how we carry our firearm. So what you're about to watch is that conversation between Chris and I talking about his experience and hopefully you guys can learn a ton of information from it and utilize that in terms of how you decide to protect yourself. So um, you and I had conversed on social media um, quite a bit about what happened to you in your situation. So I thought it'd yep. just be a good idea to kind of have you come on and kind of tell the world what happened to you in your situation. Cause I think it's a great example for a lot of people to hear. Um, people hear me talk about things all the time, but I think it's really good for people to hear it coming from somebody else who actually went through it. So just jumping kind of right into it. What, yeah. um, like, who are you and what do you do as far as being a normal person on a day to day basis? I'm just a normal dude. I'm a dad. I got a 16 year old son and a wife and a dog and I'm a custom jeweler out of Seattle, uh, Tacoma area. People I'm from the outskirts, but people are more familiar with that. Yeah. Um, I actually, I grew up kind of a, I grew up really good, good household, but I went down the wrong path. I was a convicted felon, mm -hmm. um, but I got my rights back. I grew up and I got my rights restored. And, um, because of that and really because of you, that's why mm -hmm. I'm honestly here. Gotcha. So kind of briefly talk about how you were like, what is it like trying to get your rights restored? Cause a lot of people don't realize you can actually do that. So it's fairly easy, a lot mm -hmm. easier than people think, you know, the only thing that was a big deal is they didn't want any, uh, domestic charges. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah. I guess a lot of the, the attorney was saying a lot of the gun crimes happen, um, within, you know, domestic issue related issues. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, but there was no mental health uh, screenings or anything. I don't think that's necessarily needed. I mean, if you're a good person, you're a good person, you know, regardless if you have issues or whatnot. Um, but it wasn't that bad. I didn't have any domestics and it took mm -hmm. about 60 days to, to get my rights back. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, too bad. okay. So now let's, let's jump into what you initially kind of reached out to me about and that kind of, kind of go into that day. Yeah. And, and terms of what happened so i've honestly besides my wife and one close friend i've never told anybody this because i didn't want it to seem like i was trying to like glorify a situation you know what i mean yeah like hey i shot someone yeah and you know the saying uh you know f around and find out you know a lot of people mm -hmm. that carry guns they they make those claims like it's something that uh is going to be glamorous or whatever in a way. Yeah. And that is, it's, it's terrifying. I mean, I, I, I get nervous even thinking about it, you know, and I've done a lot of things growing up to where I didn't think this would be a big deal. Mm -hmm. Um, so basically, like I said, I'm a custom jeweler. I own Heineck diamonds. I, uh, I posted some stuff. This was kind of more towards the beginning when I really started getting going and getting momentum and the jewelry stuff. I posted a couple chains online. Guy hits me up on um, offer up and he wanted to meet up and to buy a chain. I didn't really think nothing of it. It was only a three, like the chain was valued at like $300. Yeah. 
I've done it before. I don't like meeting people. I, I typically don't. So I meet them up. It's in a, a shopping center. There's a bank, a gas station, and a grocery store. And um, anyways, so I get out of the car, uh, and, the, and he's in a car, and there's two other people in the car. Um, he walks up to me. Everything's normal, but he's kind of got his hands like in his pocket. Mm -hmm. And um, right then and there, I kind of felt a little weird about the situation just because the way he was looking around. But what really tripped me out was the people in the car that were mm -hmm. waiting. It just one of those scenarios that just looked kind of questionable. And as he was walking towards me, he kind of kept like, just kind of, you know, just like scouting to see kind of who was around. And it was in the middle of like the daylight and we're in a very busy area. So I yeah. think most people would assume that, well, nobody's going to do anything in public. Come to find out <clears throat> it's not the case, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so he reaches into his pocket and he starts moving into his pocket and I can see it coming out of his pocket. And at that instant, I kind of just, I don't know how to explain it. Um, time froze, I guess, for mm -hmm. a second. Yeah. Everything felt really slow. Um, but I was kind of calm at the same time. I don't really know how to explain it. It's nothing nowhere near what I thought it would ever be like. Yeah. So just natural instincts. I did a lot of training on the range and stuff like that. Um, I actually did catch my, um, I had a, a Glock 43 X okay. with the RMR, uh, Trijicon RMR. And I pulled my shirt up and I reached and it got hung up on the, um, on the RMR, mm. which, you know, it gets hung up on the RMR, but I'm able to get it out. And then obviously I didn't use any sights or anything like that. I mean, it's cool to have. Yeah. That's um, it. That that's a whole nother story. It gave me a whole new like perception on all the accessories and all that shit. Yeah. But um, so I pull it out. First shot was at the hip. Then I shot a few more. He ran back to the car. Immediately, I jumped in the car, drove away, and because it's clear, I can say this, just out of like pure panic and then another person in the car having a gun pointed at me mm -hmm. i let off three more shots at the moving car gotcha. but it was a situation where just because they were driving away the detectives and the, the all the police that were interviewing me and talking to me they said just because someone's fleeing they're driving away doesn't mean they're still not a threat yeah so i ended up leaving the scene out of panic mm -hmm. just pure panic I, didn't, I like i didn't know what to do you know what i mean so like did the, you, go ahead like do you remember and i know you were in panic so it's kind of hard to kind of process finitely what's going on but yeah do you remember anything at all going through your mind um because i know you you mentioned things kind of slowed down but we we both know things were probably going really quickly right probably happened it's a keep... mixture of both dude it's like everything was slowed down and like tunnel vision like hyper sensitivity i guess yeah hyper awareness yeah um and i just knew like i had i had to do what i had to do i, I could see it coming out of his pocket mm -hmm. and he got it out you know what i mean he got it all the way out so what did and... you so how did you what well, you saw him drawing and so what do you think made the difference between because essentially you two are kind of drawing down on each other at the same time so Dude, what what was the difference between you getting your gun out faster than he did so for one just the situational awareness right but for yeah. two you're never going to beat somebody to a drop if they're already reaching to it right mm -hmm. it was the round in the chamber i never kept a round in a chamber ever because i shot i don't know if you can see i shot a hole through my hand with a gun when i was younger right here through my hand oh wow I see it right here it went all the way through the back of my hand was that a, like so what what happened there <laughs> like I when you... a, uh, like i said i was a delinquent oh. kid and gotcha. i was carrying around a little you know mm -hmm. what a little uh what are they called uh 
Tomcat. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. 25, 25 yeah. Cal. Yeah. I stole it from my grandpa, but anyways. Um, I sh- so I was always like paranoid with guns going off. Mm-hmm. I thought it was empty and I was just, because I, I took the magazine out. Uh-oh. And so I dropped the mag. I'm a kid. I think, well, if the mag's out, it can't fire. And there was a round. I don't know why I had my hand there, but I shot myself. And um, so, yeah, I, I'd just been paranoid about that. So I was, I, I went like deep dive into YouTube to mm-hmm. try to like get comfortable with, with it. Um, with just guns in general, honestly, dude, I was kind of, I was pretty scared about it, you know, but I knew being a jeweler, I'm at risk, right? Yep. So I have to have one. And then I stumbled across the video. I don't know how long ago, like you post, you posted the video, but you mm-hmm. look like, you're like in your mid twenties or something. Yeah. It was a long time ago. It was a very long, yeah. I've always actually wanted to like, uh, I know what video you're talking about. Um, I always wanted to update that video, but yeah, yeah. I, I put in, uh, um, why you should carry with a round in the chamber into the search engine or something along those sorts. And two videos popped a few, a bunch of videos popped up, but you just seemed more like the type of person I would want to like, we were more on the same age and all of that. So I clicked on that video and I was watching about like, okay, well, this makes a lot of sense. Like everything's not going to be a perfect scenario where I just going to be able to pull a gun out and rack it. And honestly, Colleen, I swear the, the, the phase that I was in mm-hmm. and the amount of sweat coming off of my hands and just yeah. the, the heart, like I was so weak, but strong at the same, I don't, I don't know how to, it's like, dude, I, there's no way, there's mm-hmm. no way I would have been able to rack that. My hand would have slipped right off it. Yeah. I mean, no, I was I mean sh- go ahead. Sorry. I was shaking. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, even with the three X as being as small as it is yeah i believe it probably even more so more more difficult for you to rack it under that condition and i would yeah there's no way he had his gun up like when i let off my shots oh. it was like almost all the way at me mm. so the Did first you- shot was from the hip area i honestly don't know if that one hit him or not mm. um and then that obviously caused caused a reflex into him to where he kind of just quit trying to like you know, aim and, and draw on me. And then the other ones, I was able to get two hands up, but I, I, then I shot once and then my left hand, for some reason, I'd like panic. I don't know. It just was kind of like, I didn't have a full, a full grip on the gun. I almost lost the gun. Do you think it was because when you tried to pull it before and you got caught up on your RMR that you didn't get an initial good grip on the gun? Yeah. I didn't have a good purchase on the gun. I like, okay. I was, I have big hands, but still I was probably like, almost two fingers off of the gun mm. and then it gave me a lot of things like the size of the gun now i'm very particular about the size of the gun versus just comfort that woke me up because i'm oh. like dude i was carrying like a little like ruger like a little uh 380 yeah bro yeah. there's no way yeah and i, I talk about that because i love my little small guns you know I'm, I'm i'm known for that but i also <laughs> always tell people the caveat of look you, if you're going to carry a gun that small, you need to train to it immensely, immensely. Like it's got to be automatic because otherwise you might have a hard time finding and fishing for that handle because it's so much smaller. Right. And I did a lot of training with the Glock, the 45, mm-hmm. 45 and uh, a lot of other big guns. So I kind of went crazy and just bought a bunch of guns because here I am. I, I can buy guns again, you know? Yep. So why, why, why wouldn't I? Um, And I I don't know, I just like the ability being able to protect myself and my family and that's it, you know? Um, But that was nothing like anything I would ever think it would be like. Yeah. And without that round in the chamber, man, dude, I, I'm serious. I would have been dead and they found, you know, they had the gun. It fell out of his sweatshirt when he Mm -hmm. went to the car and it was a loaded 1911 um like a like a cheaper one like a rock island armory yeah. 1911 he only had four rounds in it i guess uh-huh. but i mean that's you know one's enough yeah um, do you know do you know if the safety was activated on it it was off no oh, that was off oh okay so he was ready, ready it was yeah. I mean, in the chamber safety thumb safety was off mm-hmm. um i yeah i mean the gun was like 
not old. Like, it, you know, it would have worked, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like you said, um, it only, you only needed one round. You know, he definitely had one in the chamber. Um, and yeah. Crazy too. And that's why I never told anybody the story, man, because it's like, what do what I like? You know, it's just a weird, it's just a really weird situation, I guess. Like, it, it's, it's scary, you know, and it's, yeah. it's eye opening. But, how do you tell somebody that without coming across like, you know what I mean? Like I've never made some social media posts about it and Hey, I shot somebody, you know? Yeah. And, and I, and you know, in my interactions with you, I can kind of tell um, this wasn't something for you that was kind of based in bravado. Um, and I think the only reason I think you agree, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, the reason why you would agree to do this is just because of the learning that people could possibly ascertain from, you know, hearing about your situation and understanding the realities of it, because usually we only get the news story. We don't really right. get the people who are involved to actually speak on it. Um, I've had some close calls. I've never had to completely draw down um, on anyone. Um, I pulled, but I never had to draw down. And so being able to get yeah. somebody who's gone to the point where they've actually completely defended themselves. I think people, a lot of people need to hear it from a very kind of raw kind of gra ground level aspect of it, because Sometimes, like you said, sometimes it's um, it, it can border on the line of glorifying, which I think is a good thing from an empowering standpoint, you know, because people need to know that, yes, you were nervous. Yes, it's something you rather had not experienced, but right. you were able to do it. Right. Barely. Uh, yeah. And that's the truth. Like, I'm a big guy. I'm 6'4", 230 pounds. I'm like, I'm not, you know, I've been through a lot. I'm not like a soft person by any yeah. means at all. You know, yep. And I've been through a lot of stuff in my life, but the, the situation is just so, it's so different. Yeah, you're just not coherent. Yep. Like you're coherent, but you're not. The craziest thing for me, when I think back at it, I didn't hear a gunshot. Hmm. And you let off multiple rounds. Multiple eight. Oh. Yeah. And I did and not. hear and, a and he never got. A, he never got. A, he never got a shot off. The driver did. The, the dri passenger of the car did. Uh, oh. He was already shooting. God. Okay. I didn't even know he got off too. I didn't even know about that. I didn't hear it. I had nothing. I didn't even know about it. Yeah. But they found two holes lodged in the like hit against the side of the bank. <laughs> Shit. Jesus. So it was a very weird thing. Like I didn't hear it, but then I did some research, like adrenaline, to, like yeah, shrink. It's auditory exclusion. Yeah, dude. I don't yeah. know. But I could, say, I could honestly say, like, the only reason I agreed to do it was because of how important I know that it is to carry one in the chamber. Unless you're some like trained super tactical, you know whatever where you where it's like not a big deal like you can just go through the motion i train a lot yeah i train a lot pulling you know yeah. and you know presenting but it's you don't do it under pressure no under pressure. dude and you can't like you can't yeah. replicate that yeah. so that was the big disconnect for me is all right at the range i can shoot this good i need to get this threaded barrel, I need to get this RMR, I need to get this, I need to get this, I need to get this apex trigger, I need to do this and that. And then I realized that's cool, it's fun, right, to do, yeah. yep. but it's worthless in a real life application. I could see like, what was it, the, um, where was that guy from? Like a long shot or something at the mall where you have time to like take yeah, the shot. Yeah, the Dickens, the, uh, the, his name is Dickens, Dickens. Yeah, yeah, that was completely yeah. different than my situation, obviously. Yeah. But I didn't even look at a site, dude. Like I, it's how far apart? Do you, how far apart do you think you were from him? Oh man, when he started doing that, probably three yards. Three yards. Three, maybe if that. It was almost, you know, ten yeah. feet. Maybe? Ten feet. Yep. And, and then I, you said, and I, and then you had a um, you had a Glock forty three X. Um, you know how many rounds you had in your in your gun total? So that's another thing that's scary. Washington State put a mag ban uh, capacity of 10 rounds. Mm -hmm. I had 10. Gotcha. Well, nine, sorry, because I had I had one ch chamber. Oh, and I had gotcha. 10 total, not, not 11. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, I, I forgot. Actually, I actually forgot Washington had that uh, had that magazine capacity ban. Yeah, and an AR ban now, but that's a different story, I guess. But um, 
with you on that. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, that freaks me out too because it was almost not enough. Yeah. If that guy in the car wanted to stay and shoot and not drive away, dude, I, I had two left. Yeah. What am I supposed to do? Like, I, you know, like the cool drop, grab a mag or whatever, but like. <laughs> Wouldn't have worked. I have an and army. Hands are too shaky. I would have never found the mag well, to be honest with you. Yeah. I shoot very good, I'd like to say. Everybody I go with says, like, I'm an amazing shot. But I was 10 feet away and missed half my shots. Yeah. Yep. And I think a lot of that, too, comes down to the speed in which things happen. You know, like, I think, you know, and that, at that point, yes, you would like, you would have liked to get a great sight picture you know you had an rmr on your gun um getting that right. shot but you said before you, you i think you took your first shot from your hip yeah like right about here a little yeah. up from the hip yeah and i'm gonna be honest with you i've taken courses where they've taught where they've they've had us run drill shooting from there and i'm like oh, chances of me needing needing to do this are pretty small um but you see here in your situation this is exactly where your first shot came from I wouldn't have had time to fully present because he was already on it. I still had to lift my shirt and grab it. Yeah. And then when I got hung up on it, I mm -hmm. just kind of, I got hung up. So I just kind of like turned my gun and then like brought it off to the side to get the, uh, my switch off of the RMR. Do you think that you got hung up also because the times where you did practice drawing, you were probably wearing something different? Yes. You know, because I've noticed that about myself too. I've tried to, I try to make it a habit of anytime I go out and I carry a firearm, if I'm wearing something different that I don't normally practice with, I try to do at least two or three just draws real quick to make sure there's not something that I don't realize that it could possibly get hung up on. Because I never I, trained with the hoodie. Mm, I don't have that hoodie on. Gotcha. All our ranges are indoor and they get kind of hot. Yeah. So I've always got a t shirt on. And a t shirt's way easier to just lift up out of the way. Yeah. I think I probably grabbed my sweatshirt and missed my t-shirt. I think that's probably what kind of, you know, my t-shirt was kind of hung down a little more than my sweatshirt. Uh huh. But yeah, I mean, this is the first time I'm saying this and it's because I just can't stress it enough that like you have to have, like I used to tell people like it's your choice, right? It is yeah. your choice, but I, I'm like, I'm so passionate about like, no, <laughs> you have to have one right in the chamber. You have to. Yeah. Yep. And that was, that was kind of, you know, the, the, the mindset I came up with, you know, initially, cause I didn't start caring with the round in the chamber for me. And that's I what I'm talking about about the video. Yeah. It was, you didn't do it either. Yeah. So then I was like, all right, he's in the same exact boat as me. Yeah. And then yeah. how you were saying you, you carry it with a, you know, load it, but without the round right. and then see if the trigger ever gets uh, depressed or engaged and it right. never does. Nope. Nope. So that's now, like, now, you know, I talked off, I'll uh, talk off camera about, you know, it, don't get me wrong. You know, I still understand I'm sticking a loaded gun in my pants. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, that, that's still in the back of my mind. So, you know, I'm very methodical about how and I carry appendix. So I'm very methodical about how I put the gun in my pants every single time. Um, with the holster, of course. Yeah, and that, and that's one. A lot of times, I'll take it the holster off. Yeah, and put it back in sometimes, but like, it's obviously nothing's going to go off yeah. if it's in a good holster, right? You do things the right way. You you you're you're, you're squared away. You're good to go. Um, yeah, but it does but, take you know getting used to it. Right. So, like I said, I can honestly say, like, I know it's crazy, but because of that video, dude, like you literally. Yeah. Saved my life. And, and that's, 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 I don't know. I don't have words for it. It's, it's real shit. Yeah. You know, it's yeah, real no, shit. I, and, and, you know, I do these videos and I don't think, I don't think I truly understand the impact some of my videos do have sometimes um, because I'm, I'm just presenting what I'm either learning from my experience by way of other people or what I'm right. experiencing myself. And so I'll put oh, the video okay. out there. Say it again. Sorry off I started to cut you off another thing i didn't tell you because of my poor grip the last round i shot stove piped oh. Oh. and then i pulled the trigger again and it didn't go off so that's why i only got eight out of ten off oh wow 
Huh. So because of the grip, the grip, yeah. I've never had a problem with that gun. I've shot 800,000 rounds through that gun. Yeah. I've never had a problem, but that eighth round stove piped and I pulled the trigger and it didn't go off. And that's when I just panics and kind of just ran oh. back towards the car. And so and whatever happened check for the malfunction and like go through the steps, you know, hit the ball. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't, yeah. I couldn't comprehend it. Gotcha. So what ended up happening to him? Um, he was de alived at the hospital. Say it, say it again. I'm sorry. D alived. Okay. He was gotcha. alive at the hospital. Gotcha. I don't and get so, out. I can't say that stuff or whatever. He passed away. Gotcha. Um, so do you remember initially after that, when you first interact, started interacting with the police, like how, how did that go? Well, because I left, I was mm-hmm. obviously paranoid. Yeah. And then I got home and I don't even drink anymore. I haven't drank in years and I was going to take a shot of something. You know, mm-hmm. I was like, it's probably a bad idea. I'm just going to go back to the scene. Yeah. So and I, think, to- I think one thing that you said that made me realize, like when you said you left the scene, because um, I've been followed before. I mean, re- I've recently been followed. And yeah. um, I mean, and they were, they were chasing me around downtown for quite some time. Um, and so... One thing I realize is I can I can imagine after that happened, the one place you don't want to be is where it happened. <laughs> right? Well, I don't know. Like I'm looking at every other car in the parking lot. Like, is there point. more? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't like what's going on. And it, it, it freaked me out. So I left, you know, and I was close, really close by to where I live. Uh-huh. And I was like, I came to my senses a little more. And I was like, I gotta go back. Mm-hmm. So I went back and they were already all there. Uh-huh. obviously they got everything you know so they did impound the car mm-hmm. they did take the they take my firearm and it brought me down to the police station and uh they honestly it was a pretty smooth process man uh it wasn't uh, i will say i took a gamble you should always get an attorney yeah, <laughs> yeah. um you should always get an attorney yeah. you know and you that's what any- you didn't have anything as far as like, like good tow carry insurance or anything like that? No. And no. I wish I would have, because no. luckily I didn't need anything. I didn't have, I, I didn't even show up to the, um, to the court date, mm. the whole, the whole hearing thing, but with the other people involved, because one of the people in the car was hit too. Oh, okay. I didn't even show up. Hmm. Um, they were charged and everything like that, but I didn't even. I've nothing has happened to me. I got my firearm back, uh-huh. which took fucking a year. Excuse my language. It took a long time. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I said way more than I needed to say without an attorney. And it caused a lot of other unnecessary, like crap. Yeah. You know, like we're talking to the cop friendly. I'm telling him how many, you know, I just got my rights back, you know, whatever. I'm excited. I bought a lot of, why do you need that many guns? Cause I told him how many guns I bought. It's like, why do you need that many guns? Gotcha. And it's like, why, why, why can't I, you know what I mean? Why? Well, I, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Like you just buy all these guns. Why do you need all these guns? Were you expecting this to happen? Were you wanting it to happen type of thing? It's like, was I wanting it to happen? He's like, what are you, you going to war? I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, why do you have all these guns? But then it ended up, everything worked out. <laughs> Luckily the people that were involved, Mm-hmm. were just honest they were doing like they just got off of a string of a bunch of these type of incidences oh okay i've noticed that's that's been the pattern as of late um you know they'll they'll do they'll do multiple hits um Dude, like, they had a look, lot yeah <laughs> all on offer up they were getting golf clubs playstation mm-hmm. they took a uh, uh a really weird um antique like um rocking chair from somebody that they stole i don't know if they had a buyer from it was like a i don't know supposedly some expensive chair and i think they did it because of the um it was an easy target uh okay for them they just see an expensive chair on offer up and they're like well it's got to be worth something i don't know that chair of some sort i don't i don't know the details of it but they they were just saying a little bit about um who who these people were and yeah it ended up working out, but I would never do that again without an insurance, without uh, an attorney. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I've been slacking 
um, and I'm definitely getting an insurance policy. So when this happens, I can call somebody um, and just get it done the right way. It would be so much less stressful because I was in such a, when you're in that state, you just want to like spill out everything that happened. Yeah. Cause you're in a, and, you're in a, you're in a heightened emotional state. Like it's just, you're not thinking rationally. Right. And how do I know it? I could be in a heightened emotional state and say something like there were some issues in my story. Yeah. But it wasn't intentional. Yeah. It I was mean, I, just, you know? Yeah. I did a, I did a, a, a fake mock scenario with a uh, USCCA and yeah. I could have sworn and I did a video on it. I could have sworn. I was like, yeah, I shot, I shot like three rounds. And they were like, no, you shot eight. <laughs> yeah, and, that, and, and that's a fake scenario. So imagine in a real right. one like yours, right? Um, like imagine if your gun hadn't stovepiped, you know, at that yeah. point, because now you're looking, you're looking at a situation. You had one guy trying to shoot you, you see a car where he got out of. So they'll probably have guns too. So now you're like, I got to deal with them now next. And clearly yep. you did because they were also shooting at you. Um, so, it, you know, I, I think, I think your story speaks volumes to the reality that people, just the regular citizens potentially have to face on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. Right. Um, and so, um, and this is my last question to you before we kind of wrap it up, what changes have you made? Like going, I know you've probably gone over it a million times in your, in your mind. Um, but when it comes to the gun you carry, how you carry it, like what changes have you made after assessing the situation that you went through? Well, this is a personal thing, I guess I took off the armor okay. on my uh, carry gun. Okay. I make sure to always, um, every time I go to the range, which is a couple times a month, mm -hmm. I always shoot, even though it's more expensive, I always shoot my carry ammo through my gun. Mm, why is that? And if, because I, the stove pipe and all of that, I used to just train with, uh, just regular, like, uh, uh, blue box. What's it called? Yeah. Uh, Magnum. That, yeah. I know Magnatech or something like that. Yeah. Magnatech. Mag -tech. Yeah. Cause it was cheap. So I don't, and my gun had no issues, Yeah, you know, but I've never shot the, you know, the Hornady, the critical defense through it at the range mm. really. So I just always make sure now to shoot my range ammo and just make sure everything's feeding correctly and to use all my magazines. That's Cause I get in the habit of using one magazine, but what if I use a different magazine mm -hmm. one day and that magazine's not as reliable as the one that I always use, you know? Yep. Nope, so that's what I do now. Yeah. Um, I clean my gun all the time. You know, every time I shoot, I clean it. Yeah. You still carrying a 43 X? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, mean, I have a lot, but I like, I prefer that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Just because I know it works, even though it did do what it did. I know that's also mm -hmm. my fault. And any gun could do that. Mm -hmm. Any gun. I don't care how expensive it is. I'm sure any gun can stovepipe if you got some weak half grip on it. I don't know a lot about the, um, you know, the physics behind that, but it makes sense. Yep. Um, I totally understand. And then another big one, which I'm working on, and I think is more important than all of them, is being in a good physical and mental health. You know what I mean? I think I need to work on the physical more, you know, and, and work out more and exercise more and eat better because all that plays a role. Yeah. You know, if you're, I think if, I just feel like if you're in better physical shape and fit, you're mentally stronger at the same time, you're mm -hmm. more coherent. And, um, I just feel like you probably wouldn't get as exhausted as quickly when this is happening. Definitely going through, yeah. So I realized how important that is. That's, that's um, Point that a lot of people don't talk about right like you know i mean no offense but like if i'm if i have extra weight on me you know like sure you can still defend yourself i'm not saying you can't it just makes things a little harder you got to train around it yeah so the more i can just get myself in shape both mentally and physically i think the better you know yep no absolutely man absolutely so that's the change that i made i keep all my anything i'm gonna carry it's all stock Okay. Well, hopefully somebody will watch this video um, and then take your experience and then use it to assess their current setup and maybe decide to make the changes or maybe add some things or maybe take some things away. Um, I think the, the, the best thing that we have is to learn from each 
experience that somebody else may have, right? You know, they, you know, they say a wise man learns from yeah. other people's mistakes. And so, and that's what I try to do, especially with my defensive gun use series that I have on my channel. Um, I try to put out there as much as possible information for people to kind of ascertain the realities of a self-defense shooting. Because right. until you've experienced it, you really honestly, truly don't know, right? Like I said, I've come close. Um, and I remember the things that happened with me. I remember, like, as you said, I remember having the adrenal dump, right? But then also feeling exceedingly, like, feeling really calm at the same time. Yeah. So you know, weird. Um, yeah, it is. It's really weird, actually. And then, of course, like you talked about the tunnel vision, you kind of kind of get into a mindset where you're hyper focused on everything that's going on. So all of your senses are tuned to just deal with that. Um, and so all I saw was the sweatshirt uh -huh. and the gun coming out because I was just focused on that section. Yeah. Nothing to the sides of me I could see. Mm -hmm. I was just so tied into that. Yeah. I and think that's thing, why, I don't know. I think that's why I missed a couple times. Um, I think honestly you missed because your first shot was from the hip. People don't realize how hard it is to shoot from the hip. It's hard. I need to, that's what I need to do. That's a huge one. I need to train more for that, as goofy as it sounds. Yeah, no, I used to think it was goofy too. But when you realize, one, that it's not as unlikely as you think, but then two, shooting from your hip accurately is hard as hell. It's hard. Yeah. Because your body's not used, because you, you're literally having to use body alignment to get your shot off and understanding your body or, or orientation. And we don't shoot like that very often. So we don't know. So, so we think we do. And then like you're shooting and then you're like, you think you're shooting at the at his stomach and then you're realizing it's hitting the target at the head. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, so definitely yeah. that's, I have all the knowledge to do it yeah. right, but I botched it all, yep. but I still worked. You know? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, thank thank God. Um, but like, like you said, that's the reality, right? It's like, it's never going to be perfect. It's never going to be clean. And I think what a lot of us do is when we think about the possible situations we could be in, we think, oh, everything's going to go perfect for us, right? It's yeah. going to be perfect. Um, I'm going to see it coming and then I'm going to John Wick it out and I'm going to bang, 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 and I'm collateral it and, and do all that stuff. I'm even guilty of it, right? Um, but like I've learned a lot, just like you learned from my video. I've learned a lot just listening to you tell your story. Yeah, you know, it's got me thinking about some things too. So, and and that's what I think this community should be about. The, the gun community online, it's it's about you know learning from each other because at the end of the day, that's what it is. We are we are our own first responders. We are our own protectors. But at the same time, we can learn from each other because right. we don't have the benefit. We're not soldiers, so we've never we don't have the benefit of going to war. And experiencing that we're not police officers we don't have the benefit of dealing with constant situations we are citizens we're a different type of gun owners that aren't necessarily the same as a cop or a soldier who's at war so right uh, i think i think this is this video is going to be incredibly important i think good awesome man thank you so much well man look i appreciate you for coming on and sharing your story because i know you're rather reluctant to talk about it and i understand um at the same time i thank you for kind of you know, stepping up and just kind of presenting your story so that other people can learn from it. I'm um, also you. appreciate you making this pendant for me. Um, That's the same cool. uh, critical defense round that I, that I use. That I use. That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm just glad I, I could have been of help to you to whatever degree I was, even though I didn't know I was doing it with my video. Um, yeah. And, and, and it actually puts me in a mindset now of understanding that, like, when I put these videos out, how possibly important they can be to other people. And so yeah. I really, I really thank you for taking yeah, the time. The video, you know, it was yeah. the video. It's no. crazy to think that somebody from a complete, you know, <laughs> I don't know you, dude, I don't, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's that some like YouTube can save a life. What? Yeah. And Dude. I just, I only so happened to see your message with respect to, um, Instagram. yeah, so it was yeah. like, yeah, so it was um, weird. Yeah. So I really no. appreciate it. Um, I'll remember. I'll be thankful forever. Absolutely, brother. Well, thank you. Thank you for everything. Uh, Guns aren't political. That's why I need your help getting this message to spread on YouTube by clicking the thumbs up button, leaving a comment to let me know what you think of the video, then subscribing to the channel. But most importantly, click that bell symbol. For products featured in this video, click the links in the description.